All right, so we're going to move from cricket now and we're going to focus a bit on football right here on the Sports Max Zone. Well, much has been said about the development and sometimes lack thereof of youth footballers across the Caribbean due to a lack of organized competitions for boys and girls to play in. However, all hope is not lost due to initiatives like this. Well, Yadi Sports, in collaboration with Jay Ray and Nephew, will be hosting a Youth Soccer Cup set to take place at the Waterhouse Mini Stadium across July 20th and 21st, with over 40 teams taking part. Well, this initiative was the brainchild of Yadi Sports editor in chief, Dwayne Richards, who joins us this afternoon in studio. Hi, welcome to our studio. How are you doing? Hi, I'm, very, very, I'm good. Um, good afternoon to your listeners. It's my first time in this beautiful studio. It's really, really nice. Can't give me a job in honors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy that you can yeah. join us. And this time is for something different. And um, I introduced you as the brainchild behind this initiative. But I want to know more because there's always a story behind how uh, competitions and initiatives like this are born. So were you like sitting with one of your friends and then you said, hmm, you know, maybe there's not enough football, you tell us. It's something like that. <laughs> but before I go on, let me just um, say that it's the Rear Nevy Foundation. Okay, that's J. Rear Nevy Foundation. The foundation, yes, Thank because you for that. Because you know that Rear Nevy can't associate with children. So it's the foundation that Understand. has come on board to help us to put this on. And I'd like to say thank you to them for this, for helping us with this. Um, it's the third time that we're hosting it. It's the first time that they've come on board, and it's the first time we're doing it at Waterhouse. And Rainev has gone into the Waterhouse community to do a lot of initiatives, and this is one of them. Yeah. So we're happy that they're partnering with us. And like you said, I, the idea around hosting this type of event came from realizing that there was a gap that needed to be filled, and especially in the summer, you know, because there are tournaments that children of this age will play. Yes. But during the summer, there isn't enough of it. You know, um, overseas there are so many, but in Jamaica we don't have enough. So the idea was to help to fill that gap, that void, and to give children, academies and clubs, an opportunity to play. And, and in a competitive environment, you train and you train and train, but you want to compete. Yeah. And we, we decided to step into the space and give them that opportunity. Yeah, no better feeling than knowing that you won a competition, yeah. especially over the summer holidays. And my next question is, is there an age group or an age limit for these kids to take part? Well, we have four, four age categories that we're playing. So it's U10, that's quid, U12, that's also quid. There's U14 boys and U18 girls. Yeah. So those are the four age group categories. Yeah, and tell me a bit about the different teams that will be taking part in this competition. And there is clubs, academies, you know, um, schools that are playing in it. So it's it's a wide variety that we're catering to, and we're happy. We're happy that schools are playing um, because you know, especially high schools have the under fourteen category that are participating. They're just starting their preparations. You know how intense schoolboy football is at every level. Yeah. So they're participating, and their clubs and their academies as well. Are, are you school. pleased with the number of teams that have signed up to take part? Because yes. last time um, we checked, it was over 40 teams. It, yeah, it's just about 40, and that's what we were targeting. Uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to get the teams, that, the numbers that you want. In the first year, it was really challenging. Yeah. Second year, not so much. So now that we're established in this space, people know and look forward to it, and we're happy with the response that we've gotten. And what we're also happy with is the girls teams that are participating. Yes. Because it's hard to get that, but we need to give them it's the platform. It's hard to get girls to play? No, to get um, teams because there are not enough girls playing football in Jamaica. It's a and that's big a problem. problem. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look at the fact that we've been to back-to-back -to -back World Cups and to not have that growth that you would have expected, you know, um, from seeing how we did, especially at the last World Cup, you know, to you see how far the You think they'd be motivated? Girls, yeah, but I think it's opportunity. I think it's opportunity, and that's what we're trying to provide, an opportunity. Yeah, and you know, the summer, as you just mentioned, is an ideal time for this. And I note that you said the highest age group for the boys would be U14. Right. Which, because I was about to ask you, a lot of the teams like Manning and the Costa Cup football teams would be getting ready with their summer programs to start the schoolboy season in September. Right. But they so have their tournaments. They have their own tournaments, right. I'm just saying, right. because U14 is the... Is the highest level of age group for your for right. your boys. Right. Good that you have U18 girls involved. Yes. Of the girls categories, you said the U10 are mixed teams, yes, both boys and because girls. at that age. At you know, that FIFA, age, yeah. FIFA yeah. 
you know, they want us to have children at that age playing together so yes. they can okay. learn and develop together yeah. up to 12. But at 14, the boys start There's to develop separation. more. Yeah. So yeah. you have we to understand. separate because yeah, you don't well, want 14 year old boys playing yeah, against girls. Yeah, well, yeah. Hayley Matthews and a lot of our top women cricketers played with boys when they were very young. And it, it helps. It helps. The they, they would tell you right. that it helped in their yes. in their development. Um, the spread of uh, teams in the corporate area against teams from in the rural areas. What, what what's the balance like? Uh, unfortunately, one of the teams that were coming from the rural area from Chilani isn't going to make it again because of obviously the storm. Mm -hmm. But we have Westmoreland. We have teams from Westmoreland and also from Saint Anne. So we're happy with that. That you know some have been able to recover to come. And one of the teams is actually Reno, the girls. Reno girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're coached by someone that I coached when I was at UE. So I'm happy that. Who is that? Rosalie uh, Wood. She, she, Rosalie Wood, She yeah. played for me. Yes. And she also represented Jamaica. And um, she's now developing women's football in that part of the island. Oh, yeah. and so when she said, yes, yeah, she'd come, I'm, I'm very, very happy. You know, she wanted to bring two teams. But because of the challenges, it will only be one. But I'm still happy that they're able to make that effort and to be able to come to play on Sunday. How satisfied are you with the growth of this competition, given the fact that uh, it's still in its embryonic stages? Right. And uh, I suspect that a 40-team tournament over the weekend that you're having at the Waterhouse Mini Stadium is, is, is a happy place to be. Yes, it, it should be. I'm expecting that it will be. And based on the support that we're getting from the Rain of a Foundation, we're opening up the stadium to children. So 13 and under, we're not charging. We want them to come in and experience what it is that is happening there because we want to inspire them. Too many children are playing with their fingers now. We want them to put the phones down, put the tablets down, <laughs> get outside and play. When you and I were young, we played outside yeah. and we're trying to encourage that. To I played outside out. too, just saying. Very good. <laughs> 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 and we want them, we want them to, yeah. to, to go back outside, to yeah. play. So we want them to see this tournament. Yeah. It's pretty early in the summer, it's still only July. They still have the rest of the month plus August. We want them to go outside and play yeah. for the rest of the summer. Put the gadgets down go back outside and re-engage with nature. Yeah, Dwayne, you know, I, I've had uh, some discussions recently about the growth of, of the sport in the country and uh, how well-equipped players are now against how they would have been equipped maybe 30 or 40 years ago. And there's a narrative coming through that the coaching has improved. You mentioned a lot of academies being a part of... Uh, the teams that will be taking part in your in your in your um, festival weekend of football. Yeah. Um, you've been in sport for a long time. What's your assessment of the level of coaching and the fact that there are so many academies now coming up in the country and how this might benefit the development of the sport and teaching youngsters the the the, the drills and uh, the the technique to, do, to to make them better players. Yeah, definitely that has improved a lot and it has impacted football in a big way because in years gone by it was one person with a few balls and a whistle and you didn't do many drills. You just went out there and you played. But because of the level of teaching and it, it comes from GZ Foster, it comes from CONCACAF, it comes from FIFA, from all of these entities have come together to help to develop coaches mm -hmm. and that has helped to develop sport because people now understand mm -hmm. how to teach the sport, which is yeah. critical yeah. because... I remember when I left Vals Prep and I went to KC, and I think it was the first training session, and the coach said, show me your instep. And most boys didn't know what their instep was. So it has come a far away because people now know. Yeah. When a coach says to you, use instep and drive the ball, yeah. they know what, what the coach wants. Yeah. So these things, we may take it for granted, but it's crucial, yeah. especially at the development stages of the game. And boys and girls are learning that. So it's important that we have continuous education mm -hmm. and and that is what has helped to drive the development of the sport mm -hmm. and the academies are helping to unearth talent you know there are a number of Jamaican academies that are now overseas participating in the tournament yes. and they're doing pretty well and that comes from mm -hmm. the impetus and the growth and each academy has a number of trained coaches and that is continuing to help the development of the sport in Jamaica yeah I, I, we're gonna leave you now um, Dwayne, just before you go, how is, how is your sister? A lot of our <laughs> viewers may not know that Sanya Richards Ross, the Olympic 400 meter champion from the USA, Jamaica born, right. is, is your sister. How is she getting ready for yeah. some NBC work at the Olympics? Yes, yes. Um, she's doing well. She enjoys doing commentary. She accidentally stepped into that space. <laughs> at her last Olympic trials, she got hurt. Yes. 
and she, she filled in. And since then, she and Otto have become a real duo in terms of the commentary that they I'm bring. I'm so proud of them as, yeah, as Caribbean they, people. As Caribbean people, yeah. they represent. Yeah. NBC doesn't do anything without her. And I'm really, really, as a big brother. Yes. I've, I was a proud of brother. her when she ran. Yes. And now what she's doing after her track and field career, I continue to be so proud of my little sister. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I agree with you 100%. I was just talking about her on the show yesterday, Sanya Richards-Ross. Olympic champion, one of... And I happened to see, see that program. I was so proud. I was beaming when you were talking about that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Thank and you. although she switched allegiance to the USA, she has a very, very high regard for her country, and she never, ever leaves Jamaica out of her narrative. And she dearly loves uh, Jamaica and always tries to identify herself with reggae country. Dwayne, thank you very much for being with us on the My pleasure. Sports Max Zone. Me. We hope that you'll have a good weekend with your... Um, Ray Neve Foundation sponsored event with lots of young footballers gathering at the Waterhouse Mini Stadium to uh, get some good football going and developmental for the game in the country. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.